Praise the Lord, friends. I'm so glad that you tuned into the program today. We're talking about breakthrough, and God is a God of breakthrough. He wants you to experience breakthrough today, and one way that you can do that is keep listening to the Holy Spirit. You know, just because God did something one way one time doesn't mean he's gonna do it that way the next time. So we need to keep listening to the Spirit to move into what God has for us. We'll begin reading in verse 33. It says, when they heard that, they were cut to the heart. This is, uh, you know, they had been, the, the church had been going forth having great victory. Then there stood up one in the council of Pharisee named Gamaliel. This is the one who uh, actually uh, trained Paul as a young man when he was Saul of Tarsus in the scriptures as a Pharisee, a doctor of the law. And he had a reputation among all the people and commanded to put the apostles out for a little bit. And he said unto them, you men of Israel, take heed yourselves. What you intend to do is touching these men. For before these days rose up Thutis, boasting himself to be somebody to whom a number of men, about 400, joined themselves who were slain. And as many as obeyed him, they were scattered and brought to nothing. And after this man rose up Judas of Galilee in the days of taxing and drew away many people after him, and he also perished. And all, even as many as obeyed him, were dispersed. And now I say unto you, refrain from these men and let them alone. For if this counsel or work be of men, it will come to nothing. In other words, if this is just man's doing, if it's man's power, man's strength, man's ability, it's going to come to nothing. But if it be of God, you cannot overthrow it. Less happy you, you be be found even to fight against God. Again, you can't fight God and win. So, you know what? When something is God... Right? We, we need to find out what God's doing. We need to find out when he wants us to do it, how he wants us to do it, and we need to go about it his way. You know, so many people are, are going about and they're, they're trying to do their thing and ask God to bless it. It's much better to find what God wants you to do and then the blessing's already there. Praise God. It kind of reminds me of when we were moving here and, and, and making the change from Kit Carson where we had pastored for 13 years and coming here you know, to start over again. And one of the people in my church, they now attend, Carla Gifford, she'll be here in second service. But Carla came to me and she said, do you know where God is? And I said, no. And she said, God is in Colorado Springs and he's waiting on you to get there. You, in other words, it was evident to Carla that God was calling us here, that God was doing this work and you need to get there and he'll be there when you get there. Praise God. <laughs> Well, praise God. We need to find out what God's doing and then get involved in it. And the blessing is, is, is being where God wants us to be and doing what God wants us to do. And Gamaliel says, listen, if this work is, is of God, you're not going to be able to, to win. You can't fight against God and win. And to, to him they agreed. And when they called the apostles and beaten them, they commanded them that they should not speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. And they departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. And daily in the temple and in every house, they ceased not to teach and preach Jesus Christ. They just continued going for it. Amen. They continued to do what God called them to do. So, so rather than do our thing and ask God to bless it. I think it works out better. Find out what God wants us to do. Get involved where he wants, in doing what he wants us to do and doing it the way he wants us to do it, right? There was no question that God wanted David to rule. He, he had some enemies, right? The Philistines that were coming against him, they came against him not once, but they came against him twice. But, you know, he didn't go about uh, attacking them or going against them each time. He went, he went different ways because he was listening for the instruction of God, which is one of my other points. Praise God. We need to keep listening to the Holy Spirit. We need to keep doing what God wants to do. Now, when he went, went out and won the battle the first time, he said, God has broken through my enemies. One translation said, God has burst through my enemies like a bursting flood. It's like if a dam has begun to break. And, the, and, and, and we brought up this scripture in Isaiah 59, verse 19, that says, when the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord will raise up a standard against him. 
And I want, I want to turn there to Isaiah 59. I want to begin reading actually in verse 16. And, and I want you to realize that the victory that we have ultimately is a result of redemption. It's a result of what Jesus has already done. Let's look at this in verse 16. He's talking about the sinfulness of man. In fact, some of Isaiah 59 is quoted in Romans chapter 3 when Paul is talking about the sinful condition, the sinful state of mankind. And it says this in verse 16, he saw there was no man and wondered that there was no intercessor. Therefore, his arm brought salvation unto him. That's talking about Jesus. And he says, and his righteousness, it sustained him. For he put on righteousness as a breastplate and a helmet of salvation upon his head and put on the garments of vengeance for clothing and was clad with the zeal as a cloak. According to their deeds, accordingly, he will repay fury to his adversaries, repayment to his enemies, to the islands, he will repay repayment. So they will fear the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun. When the enemy shall come in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord shall raise up a standard against him. In other words, the enemy had come in. The enemy had fought mankind, but God sent Jesus, praise God, and because of what Jesus did in his death, burial, and resurrection, the Holy Spirit has been poured out, and now we win in the victory of Jesus. See, the battle's already been won, praise God, and, and we are actually walking in the victory that Jesus already won for us. And so he goes on and says, the Redeemer will come to Zion, and to those who turn from trans transgressions in Jacob, saith the Lord. As for me, this is my covenant with them, says the Lord. My spirit that is upon you and my words which I put in your mouth will not depart out of your mouth, nor the mouth of your seed, nor the, the mouth of your seed seed, saith the Lord from this point and forever. So how do we walk in that victory that Jesus already won? We keep believing and we keep speaking the word of God. Amen? So no matter what we're facing, no matter what difficulties we're facing, no matter what challenge or opposition is coming our way, we keep believing and we keep speaking the Word of God. Maybe we've been at a place, and you know what? We're just about to break through, you know, in our area of healing, and the enemy has come against us to try to fight us and stop us, or we're just about to break through in the area of provision, and the enemy tries to, you know, put up one more battle and fight us one more time. We're just about to break through in an area of relationship, no matter what it is. But you know what? We keep believing and we keep speaking the word of God. Hallelujah. It wasn't very long ago, you know, a young man and a young lady came to me and they were fighting a battle in a certain area and they'd been down there, they'd had a battle, they'd lost it. Now they, they're coming, at the, the enemy's coming at them again. They're, they're starting to win this victory. And I said, do you know these scriptures? They said, yes. And so I said, you keep believing and you keep speaking what this scripture says. About. I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to agree with you. I'm going to believe God. But you keep believing and you keep speaking what the Bible says. Amen. What the word of God says. So the way that we enter into that breakthrough, the way that we enter into that, that the Lord has already done, is we keep believing and speaking what the, what the word says. Amen. So he says, when the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord. Lord is going to raise up a standard against him. The Lord has burst through my enemies like the bursting through of many waters, like a bursting through of a flood. Hallelujah. Praise God. So, you know, the, I, I saw like a tidal wave of what God is doing in the Spirit of God doing, you know, in these last days. God said he'd pour out of his Spirit upon all flesh. And is this broke for, you know, no matter what, what kind of a fit the devil tries to th throw, we still win. Hallelujah. And I don't know if, about you, but I've read the end of the book, and the church is going out in power. The church is going out in glory. The church is going out in victory. We're not going out as a whip defeated dog. Amen? We're going out in power. We're going out in victory. We're going out in authority. Praise God. We're going out with all of the gifts of the Spirit. We're going out with all the fivefold ministry. You know, we're, the, the church is going to move forth in power in the last days. And we are moving, we are moving in that. I thank God for it. Amen. And so I just thank God for what God is doing. Now, if we go back to this story, how do we walk in this victory? Well, we keep believing and speaking the word of God, walking in that, find what God's doing. But then notice this. 
After David said, the Lord has broken through like the breach of waters, the Lord has burst through my enemies like a bursting flood and called it the God of the breakthrough in verse 21. It says, then the Philistines left their idols and David and his men burned them. If you want to keep walking in victory, you need to get rid of demonic attachments. Thanks so much, friends, for taking the time to watch us today. And We've been sharing on God of the Breakthrough. We're talking about how to overcome your enemies and get to the place that God is taking you. David said, God has burst through my enemies like a bursting flood. And I believe that we can have the same victory that David had when we learn to rely on the Holy Spirit to keep listening to his voice and to do exactly what he tells us to do. So we want you to get this series, God of the Breakthrough, where we're sharing practical information to help you move into the next level and accomplish what God has called you to accomplish. Praise God, God wants you to break through, God wants you to overcome, God wants you to move into the place that he has for you. So call us today or get on the internet and get this. Blessings. Praise God. The Bible says this. Let's turn to James chapter 4 and let's look at James chapter 4, verse 6 through verse 8. I love this in James chapter 4. He's talking about the humility of faith. But he says this in verse 6 through 8. He says, but God gives more grace. Wherefore, he says, God resists the proud and gives grace to the humble. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Some people are resisting the devil and wondering why it's not working. Well, first submit yourself to God. This goes really well with find what God wants you to do, get involved in it, and then the blessing's already there, right? Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. So we need to keep following Christ. We need to commit ourselves totally and wholly to following Christ. Jesus said, if any man's going to follow me, in, in Matthew chapter 16, verse 24 and verse 25, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. For he who loves his life will lose it, but he who loses his sake for my sake and for the gospel's sake will find it. Amen? So, so we just need to surrender, completely surrender totally to the Lord Jesus Christ, totally commit our lives to him, totally commit our way to him. Another thing is we need to beware of covetousness. You know, the Bible actually says in Colossians chapter 3, verse 5, that covetousness is idolatry. Yeah, and the Bible talks about this in 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 10. We need to walk, guard our attitude towards money, right? Money's not bad. Money's not evil. God wants to bless you. I believe God wants people, his body, his church to have lots of money. It's the blessing of the Lord that makes rich. God delights in the prosperity of his servant. Beloved, I wish above all things that you prosper and go, be in good health, right? But at the same point in time, we, money is not the reason that we make our, our final decision. We make our final decision based on what the Lord says, right? So as, as we think about this, you know, it, it says, he, he says, the love of money in 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 10, is the root of all evil. And some who coveted after have pierced themselves through with many evils. So, like when I made the decision to move to Colorado Springs and come here, you know what? I had my house paid off. I had my church paid off. I had my little feedlot paid off in Kit Carson. In fact, I was thinking, I'm doing good. I got my house paid off, my church paid off, my feed, feedlot paid off. I, I just thought, now all I need to really do is... is, is put my kids to college, and get a retirement. And then Andrew Womack came and preached for me, and he said, some of you are thinking like this. I got my house paid off. I got my car paid off. I got my business paid off. The problem with that picture is it's all about you. And so we had to come here. When we came here, did you know we had to go to six banks, even though we had 50% down, we had to go to six banks before we found a banker that would loan us the money to come here. There were no promises. There were no guarantees. But you know what? We did well, and God's blessed us over and over and over again. God's blessed us. He's been with us, and he's helped us. I thank God that he's helped us. Amen. Praise God. Well, maybe the bankers knew the facts. I actually went and talked with a very successful pastor in this area before we came here. He said, I want you to know that 90% of church plants in Colorado Springs fail. But he said, you'll probably make it. 
He said, and, and here I am, I'm in my dockers and my city shoes. And he said, we got a lot of country people. He looked right through me here and he said, you'll probably make it. Praise God, <laughs> hallelujah. Amen. Well, we just need to keep doing what God called us to do, amen? And we need to totally commit ourselves to the Lord. But I made this decision. You know, I made this decision when I was 14 years old. And when I was 17 years, when I was 17 years old, I lived on a ranch in southeastern Colorado. My dad had died, my grand, and, and my my grandparents came to me and my grandparents said, listen, if you'll run this ranch and do this, then we'll give it to you. I said, I, I can't do that because God's called me and I have to do what God, now if they said they give it to me without putting this requirement that I had to run it, but I said, I have to do what God's called me to do. But that, they put that requirement. I said, I can't take that. Praise God. And I've made that, I've made that decision a number of times. I made that decision, you know, when we moved here and started the church, I said, no matter what it takes, you know what? I'm going to follow God. I don't care if I have to, you know, I went to the dog, foot dog store one day and they, they had a job at night, $9 an hour. I said, you know what? No matter what it takes, I, I'll do it. I'm going to take care of my family. My family's not going to suffer because I've obeyed God. Amen. My, my, you know, God's my first priority. My family's my first responsibility. So if I have to carry dog food at night, I'm willing to do that. But God met all my needs. God's provided for us wonderfully. He's blessed us over and over and over again. But we make that decision over and over again, right? It's not because of the finances. Ultimately, it's because I'm following Jesus and doing what he's called me to do and seeing how I can be a blessing to humanity. Praise God. And so we've got to get rid of any, you know, wrong motives, so on and so forth. So you know, keep moving forward. Seek first the kingdom of God. Keep doing what God called you to do. Get rid of demonic attachments. And then this last thing. When the Philistines came again, it says in verse 23, David inquired of the Lord. This is the second time. He, he, and he asked God again, keep listening to the Lord. And the Lord said in verse 23, you shall not go up. But fetch a compass and come in behind them. Go about it a different way. Come at a different direction. And he says, come over against them, against the mulberry trees, and let it be when you hear the sound of a going in the tops of the mulberry trees, you will bestir yourself, for then the Lord will go out before you. Here's something in following God. You know, sometimes it's better to be a little bit behind God than to be in front of God, because if you're behind God, you can actually see God out in front of you working. If you got get out in front of God, you don't even know where God is. So God is good. Amen? So we keep listening. Now, a couple of things. The Bible says this in Colossians chapter 4, verse 2. It says, continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving. Keep praying, right, and watch. You can actually watch and have your prayer, see how your prayers are answered. We talked last week about George Mueller. George Mueller ran an orphanage in England years and years ago, took care of thousands of orphans, said he would never ask a man for anything. Sometimes they sat down with these kids. Sometimes they had hundreds of kids. There was no food. They sat down and prayed, and so there would be a knock at the door, and somebody would show up. There would be food for everyone. He, he recorded his prayers, though, in a journal, and he recorded over 55,000 answered prayers. And you'll be amazed sometimes if you'll write down your prayers and you watch, continue in prayer, and watch in the same with thanksgiving. The Bible says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 16 through 18, rejoice evermore, pray without ceasing, continue to pray, right? Pray without ceasing. They asked Smith Wigglesworth, they said, how long do you pray? He was noted to be a, be a man of prayer. He said, well, I generally don't pray over five minutes, but I generally don't go over five minutes without praying. Pray without ceasing, right? In everything, give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Keep listening to the Holy Spirit. Now, God, God spoke to David here, and notice this in verse 23. He said, don't go up, but he says, you wait till you hear the sound. You know, it's amazing if you'll listen in your prayer, if you'll not just speak, but if you'll listen, what you'll hear. And we need to hear the sound, right? Jesus said, my sheep know my voice, and another they will not follow. We need to keep listening till you hear the sound of a going forth, right? Like the wind. The Spirit is like the wind. Jesus said in John chapter 3 and verse 8, it, the Spirit is like the wind. You, you don't know where it came from. You don't know where it's going. But you can tell when it's here. 
Praise God. Listen for the wind of the Spirit. Listen for the voice of the Spirit. Listen for the voice of the Lord. Turn with me really quickly to Psalm 29. I want to read three verses in Psalm 29. It's talking, or for Psalm 29, about the voice of God or the voice of the Lord. Psalm 29, verse 3 says this, The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord is upon many waters. When John saw Jesus in Revelation chapter 1, verse 15, he said his voice was like the sound of many waters. In verse 7, it says, the voice of the Lord divides the flames of fire. Right? You wait till you hear the sound, right, of the, of the wind, right? The, the spirit going before you. And then he says here, the voice of the Lord divides the flames of fire. On the day of Pentecost, the, the apostles were in one place and they were in one accord and they heard, as it were, in Acts chapter 2, verse 2, what the sound of a rushing mighty wind and it filled all the house where they were sitting and there sat upon them four tongues of fire and they all began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them the utterance. The voice of the Lord divides the flames of fire. Praise God. The, the, the Lord is like what water, like a fire, like a wind. We're talking about the presence of God, the presence of the Holy Spirit. He says this in verse 10 and verse 11. The Lord says, sits upon the flood. The Lord has burst through my enemies like a bursting flood. The God of breakthrough. Hallelujah. Yea, the, king, the Lord sits king forever. The Lord will give strength unto his people. The Lord will bless his people with peace. Thank God for the voice of the Lord. Thank God that we can hear the voice of the Lord. He says, you wait for the sound. Thank God for the sound of the voice of the Lord. Leviticus chapter 25 verse 9 talks about the year of Jubilee. And he says, on the year of Jubilee, when the, on the day of atonement, you cause the trumpet to sound and, and, and proclaim liberty throughout all the land. It, there, there's a breaking forth. There's a freedom that's available. In Joshua chapter 6 verse 5, when Joshua was going in and they were taking over Jericho, he said, you go in and march around the city once every day, right? You do this for six days, and then on the seventh day, you go around seven times. And on the seventh time, sound the trumpet. And when you hear the sound of a trumpet, shout with a great shout, for the Lord has given you the city. And when they shouted with a great shout, the walls literally fell under themselves. The Bible says this, I think it's in... Psalm 47, or I think it's Psalm 47, verse 1. It says, clap your hands, O you people. Shout unto God with the voice of triumph. When they shouted, those walls fell down, and they walked through and began to take the promised land. In 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 41, after Elijah prayed, right? He, first of all, he went and told Ahab, it's not going to rain until I say it's going to rain. You are a wicked king. <laughs> and then he went, and God said, now you go. Praise God. And you go to the brook Cherith. And he went there to the brook Cherith. And the ravens brought him food, right? Bread and water for many days. After a period of time, right? The brook dried up. And the Lord said, listen, I want you now to go to Zarephath because I've commanded a widow woman to, to sustain you there. So he goes to Zarephath and he finds this widow woman. He said, what are you doing? She said, I, I've got just a little bit of meal in a in a." Barrel, and I've got just a little oil in a jar, and I'm going to go and get a stick and make a fire and make some a cake for me and my son, and we're going to eat thereof and die. And Elijah said, "Feed me first, for the Lord says the barrel of meal will not waste, and the jar of oil will not fail until God sends rain in Israel." And she went and she fed him first. Praise God! And every day they went and opened that. And there was meal there. And every day they went and opened that jar. And there was oil there. And they had enough food, praise God, till God sent rain in Israel. And then after a period of time, God told Elijah, now it's time. And he went and he prayed. And he prayed seven times. And after the seventh time, he kept sending his servant. And his servant went the seventh time. He said, I see a little cloud in the sky like a man's hand. And he, he, he said, we've got to run. And he went and met Ahab and he said, listen, you better get out of here because I hear the sound of an abundance of rain. There's a sound. He heard something that was, he said, get ready, king. It's coming, king. Hallelujah. Get ready. Glory to God. 
Second Chronicles chapter 5, verse 13, when they dedicated the temple and they brought the Ark of the Covenant into its rightful place, that Ark represented God's presence among his people. They began to play the trumpets and, and they began to sing with, with one accord to the Lord. His mercy endures forever and the glory of the Lord filled the house so much that the presence, amen, of the Lord filled the temple. Amen? Psalm 89, verse 15, let's end with this one. There's lots of Scripture's about hearing the voice, the sound. Psalm 89, verse 15 says this. Praise the Lord. I'll get there. It says, blessed is the people that know the joyful sound. They shall walk, O Lord, in the light of your countenance. Do you know the joyful sound? Do you know the sound of the voice of the Lord? It's been said about faith that faith sees the invisible. Faith hears the inaudible. See, people of faith, they're listening to a different voice than the voice of the world. Sometimes you've got to shut off the voice of the world. Recently, we just had to shut the news off. We just had to shut it all off. I said, listen, it, it, it's so upsetting to me. I can't continue to listen to all this because I can't get where I'm going. You know, I'm doing what I can do. I've sent a few thousand dollars to missionaries that we support on a regular basis that are in Ukraine. Praise God. You know, but, but what's going on is upsetting me and it's, it's bothering me to the point that it's affecting me, you know, to where it, it, it's not being positive in my life. So I'm going to keep doing what I can, but I can only do what I can do. And I'm going to go to God and pray, but I'm going to shut off the sound of some of the world because I've got to hear the voice of God. I've got to hear what God is speaking. I've got to hear what God is saying. But faith he, see, hears the, faith sees the invisible, faith hears the inaudible, and faith does the impossible. So what voice are you listening to? David kept listening to the Lord, and he obeyed the voice of the Lord. And when he followed God's instructions, he got God's results. Amen? So God has good things for us, and we need to keep listening to his voice so we can move forward and accomplish what he wants us, us to accomplish. Amen? You can experience supernatural breakthrough in every area of your life. In this series, God of the Breakthrough, you'll learn how to conquer your giants like King David as you follow the Lord. Get ready to break through to victory. You can get it today for $12 or USB, including audio and video, for $19. Call 719-418-4000 or visit charischristiancenter.com. Did you know that you can stay connected with us? We have a brand new church app. You can get it for your phone. You can get our most recent videos, audios. Stay connected with the church. Stay connected with the different things that are happening in different departments. And you can get it, have it on your phone, have it there, and all of it's absolutely free of charge. We'd love to have you get our new church app. Blessings. Thanks for watching Grace for Today. This broadcast has been made possible by our faithful partners. If you would like to become a partner, need prayer, or have a question, please call us at 719-418-4000. Or to partner online, go to charischristiancenter.com slash give. You can write us at P.O. Box 63733, Colorado Springs, Colorado, 80962. See you next time on Grace for Today.